Hi there, friends. Ken here, your thrifty apprentice. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to day 27 of Inktober, where the prompt is beast. With this particular prompt, I decided I wanted to go into the animal realm, since that's the first thing that popped in my head when I saw the word beast. And I figured, hey, you know what? Let's do another bird. I've done one where I put the eagle up a couple of weeks ago. It was my first bird. I said, let's do another animal. So I decided on a blue jay. I pulled up a couple of reference photos, one on Unsplash, one on Pinterest, and I used it in order to sketch out my composition and transfer it into my Inktober sketchbook. I'm using the 88-piece Darnassus um, alcohol ink marker set in order to do this composition. As you guys know, I am testing those, and we will have a review coming up. Um, sooner than later on these particular markers and i chose four different shades of uh, blue excuse me ranging from a pale blue all the way up to a really dark blue in order to get the shadings right on my bird so i initially started with a black fine liner just kind of putting in those details that i felt i would need to guide me through the composition and then i'm going to save the rest of the fine lining until the end of the composition just in case i decide i don't need it I uh, started with the bird's head. Here's the thing. This composition is not going to come out the way that I had it in my head when I started out. It's not going to come out the way that I felt I could translate it from the reference photo to the actual page that I'm creating. So this was definitely a great learning experience. One of the many things I like about art is that every composition doesn't have to come out right. And the ones that don't, gives you the opportunity to learn and grow from your own work, which I love. There are some times when I'll even turn the camera on and record myself practicing just so I can look back at the video and see what I could possibly do different in order to improve. And in all honesty, that's kind of what's happening with this composition. As I look back over it and I'm doing the voiceover, I see a lot of details I can improve on for the next bird that I try to illustrate with markers. What you've seen me do is just go in with those different shades in order to start coloring the bird in the way I kind of, you know, saw it from the reference photo, my perspective of it. The video skipped just a little bit when I was doing the bottom part of the wing, but, um, you know, that happened sometime. I forgot to turn on the camera, but I do think that you are able to get the gist of everything that I did to the bird in order to pull off this composition from the video that um, I did have remaining. I'm going to try to watch that next time and make sure that I'm hitting record when I need to. Uh, yeah, sorry guys, my mistake. So here you're going to, you see shading. You see me just kind of going back and forth, looking at the reference photo, figuring out where my darks go, figuring out where my lights go, um, figuring out how to shade the wings, where the different division and the wings are. And eventually I'm going to move into doing the actual tail feathers, which is probably the part of the composition I wish that I could change the most. And we're going to get there in just a second. Putting in the um, definition on the wings was actually really, really fun. And I'll say I probably ended up being happy with about, oh, 90% of this illustration. Everything from the head all the way down to where the tail feathers begin. And then that's sort of where my problem takes off. First things first, I will probably extend the actual wing that you can see facing the viewer into more of a feathered V. And then as far as the tail feathers are concerned, I probably would have stopped on the detail with them much earlier. As you can see, they're divided off into like these four points on the end, which I feel is much better looking back at this than what I'm actually going to do to the tail feathers as this video continues. And it, 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 was, it was a learning experience. I now know that that's not the way that I would want to take a blue jay in. You guys are going to see that in just a second. Now that's a phthalo blue, which was sort of like my mid-range blue that I'm using to add in um, <clears throat> those divisions in the tail feathers there. And that's a really dark shade of blue that's being used for uh, the detailing and my lightest blue which was pale blue was blending out everything and the areas that were white i used gray and the pale blue together to sort of give the implication that it may be white but that you would see some color 
Um, and then I went back in with the fine liner in certain areas and added in further details. It was at this point that I decided, hey, I would go ahead and just kind of fine line the entire bird because I felt like it made um, the feathers look better when I did that detailing. And I'm glad I did because it gave more definition and division on the back of the breast where the wings would meet. Um, and I feel like it gave more definition to the actual tail feathers as well. However, this is where I went into the section that I feel like I made a mistake because I extended those tail feathers down into a V. In my head, I was thinking, well, I'll use the fine liner and actually give feathering detail on the bottom and it would make it look more separated. Um, unified but separated at the same time, but that's definitely not the effect that it gave. So I kept hemming and hawing with it. Um, and so I was able to get it to a point where I was okay with it. But if I had anything to change, the way I did the bottom of the tail feathers would definitely be it. You're going to see me take the black fine liner and throw in striations throughout the bird. That's just to implicate dark shadows where the feathers would be separating. Um, and to give me a base to work form from to put the highlights on. Here is the branch. What, two, three shades of brown it was. Burnt sienna. And I think the darkest one was burnt umber. Um, they the markers have some customary names, and they have some kind of whimsical made up names as well. Lastly, and in shadows, I went in with my uh, black, and I am just adding in shadows like under the wings, coloring in the bottom of the legs, all black, which I did in first, just enhancing it, using the dark brown to enhance the shadows in the actual branch itself. And then we're going to jump in with highlights to finish everything up. Guys, this was fun. It was a learning experience for me. And hopefully you guys learned something from the video as well. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel or returning and haven't subscribed. And just keep painting and crafting.